all right welcome back um so we talked about wanting to share and today Sylvia is going to share a story with us about being a new man the scripture talks about how when you're new and old things have passed away behold all things are new so what is this new thing you're talking about uh, we even mentioned being saved what does that mean so uh, Sylvia's gonna uh, that was really good up to that point <laughs> So, um, we're probably going to find another word besides so, because we use it so much. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> okay. A few months ago, maybe even as far back as a year ago, I felt um, God was calling me to be more vocal and to do more with people and share more of my experience, right? And then as um, I began to seek God and things like that, this video concept came to mind. And in all honesty, I was initially terrified. Um, I don't want to claim the fear, but let's just be honest. It was good and old fear. And I thought, oh no, <laughs> what are the people going to say? What are the people who know me going to say? What are the people who were there when I did this or I did that or when I said these things or when I acted this way? What are all of those people going to say when they see me on a video talking about Jesus, 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 right? And I initially thought, I ain't going to be able to do that. <laughs> Right, and so um, bear with me because I have some notes here and I got my Bible here and I got my concordance here because um, I don't know how it works with you when you pray. I hear people say they pray all the time, right? But sometimes with me, when I'm praying, um, the Lord speaks to me through the Holy Ghost and it's a, it's a genuine conversation, right? But sometimes when I pray, I get crickets. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I didn't get an answer. Um, and then I hear the answer later and it, I know immediately that it, it's to a prayer from, you know, three or four months ago, right? Mm -hmm. So here I was, all bent out of shape, right? Like, I, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I could not feel to do that. And um, I had a very um, unfortunate and quite embarrassing experience. And after that, the Lord applied it to that fear. So I work in hospice. And I can explain a little bit about what hospice is. Uh, maybe later in another video, but just keep in mind these are patients that are diagnosed with the terminal illness and part of my job is working with people in the community, right? So volunteers that help us with these patients and our clinical staff and I have a volunteer that delivers I mean, well, she she writes bereavement cards to the families of people who lost a loved one. They write those? Yes. That's nice. That's very nice. And so I was going to take her some cards and some postage. And so keep in mind, um, we are currently in a global pandemic and social distancing is a must. And um, she is doing this from her home, not from her office, right? And so I was delivering her these cards and some postage and envelopes and um, for hundreds. This is not for like five or 10 people, it's for hundreds of people. So I am carrying these and I pull up to her house. I call to let her know. Um, that I'm there, but she doesn't answer, and I, I'm just gonna leave them on her porch, right? Because we're social distancing. Mm -hmm. Get out of the car, I'm packing everything. It's a beautiful day, and I, you know, I'm just. Duh, 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 duh. I climb the steps, and you know that sweet spot on your big toe. <laughs> the <laughs> that one perfect spot that you hit that shuts down all body function. Everything. Everything. Yes. I get to the last. Step and I stump my big toe in that spot. I thought you was gonna say you fell. I'm glad you just stumped your toe. You didn't. You didn't fall. Well, you didn't hear the rest of the story. Oh. So in that moment, <laughs> I had to make a decision. It's me and the cards, Because right? <laughs> I couldn't hold the cards and catch myself. <laughs> because I told you I hit that spot where everything goes numb, right? So I couldn't stand up anymore. <laughs> And so I decided this box of like 300 cards, 
It was not worth my life. I'm on these paved steps. <laughs> And I let it go. Girl, it was like confetti. <laughs> it's just like everywhere. <laughs> Cards everywhere. But I caught myself. So I'm on her porch on all four. <laughs> I didn't skin a knee, bust the elbow or anything. And I'm, I'm thinking, save. Yes, I made it. So I'm like doing this, trying to get the cards up. I'm trying to shove everything back in the box. And I get it all situated on her step. I get in my car and she comes out. And I'm like, oh, hey. <laughs> well, she didn't, she didn't. And I played it off and I was like, you know, there's your car, da, da, da. I kind of stubbed my toe on your thing. And I said, but I'm good, you know, da, 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 da. <laughs> And I went on about my day and forgot all about it, except for my little throbbing toe. <laughs> A couple of weeks later, that volunteer is related to another volunteer. And um, we were talking about something. And as we get off the phone, that person says, now you haven't fallen on anybody else's porch, have you? And oh. I was like, <laughs> busted. They saw me. <laughs> Come to find out, she has one of those cameras on the doorbell. <laughs> and at some point went back and looked at it and saw the whole <laughs> and so I was in that second I froze because I was like mortified right, right. because I'm sure I look like an idiot <laughs> you down on all four on all four sweeping, cars sweeping up cars <laughs> and I thought oh, shoot <laughs> I felt stupid and um, he kind of chuckled and you know what I did I laughed too and in that moment that is when um, it's like the Holy Ghost spoke up and showed me the difference between me before before salvation and me now, right? And so what was that difference? So I have some stuff up here and I got notes. Um, the first thing um, is how do you feel now when you make mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. So like when you do something wrong now, um, how do you feel in comparison to how do you feel when you were doing something wrong and you didn't have hope? You didn't know yourself. You didn't know Christ. You didn't know that you weren't what you used to be, right? And so when he laughed, um, the old me would have been just totally humiliated and uncomfortable and wanted to hide and not be seen. I laughed too. And I didn't just laugh because it was funny, because it was funny. <laughs> it was funny. But I laughed because I'm not there anymore. I've, I'm over that. I'm not still sitting at the step. I, I'm not still picking up cards. I'm not, I can look back on it and know that I've come a distance from where I was that day. And that's what the Lord told me, you're not there anymore. Whatever it was that I lived when I was in sin, that's it. I lived I'm it, not I'm not there anymore. I'm a new creation. I'm not there anymore and I'm not that person anymore. And so whatever someone else has to bring up about who that was, I mean, he said it so clear, he said they don't know you. And not just that they don't know me, but when he said that, it cleared up that they never knew me because he always knew me. I didn't know me when I was living in sin, right? I didn't know that step. And you know how people's steps are that top one is higher than it's high. It's my top. <laughs> <laughs> that step was different. I didn't know, I wasn't familiar with the terrain, right? But he knew everything from birth and before birth for me. So all of that hoopla that I was going through and I'm this and I'm that, I'm not that anymore. And he never intended for me to be those things. So, um, so that was also not my first time that I slipped, right? <laughs> no. So I'm clumsy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you didn't see this, but Kanisha and I were in here and I hit the table. I lived here 13 years and table been here every day. Yeah. But I hit that table. Yeah. It was okay though. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> I hit the table. It was funny. But I'm clumsy. That's not the first time I've slipped up, right? And so why am I getting tore up about it? What happened all the other times I fell? I got up. You know, what happened the last time I bumped in the table? I fixed it back and I went on, right? So why am I going to spend forever tormenting myself? And it's a trick of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Because that's what he does. It's like you find yourself in compromised situations and then you feel like, oh, well now I've messed up so nobody's going to listen to me now. I just did the yep. worst thing ever and it's it's over. 
But that's just the trick of the enemy. He wants us to think that when we're down, we have to stay down. But you don't have to stay down. No, you do not. Don't stay down. Don't stay down. <laughs> so if I hadn't gotten up, I'd still be sitting on that porch today, right? So why fall for the trick? That's not the first time I've slipped. That's not the first time I've fallen. And that's not the last time the Lord will catch me, right? But you know what? Next time you go to deliver something to her, you're going to recognize that that step is just a little higher. Well, <laughs> and that's a good point because I have it written down here. What happens when you have to go back, right? And so some of us come out of a situation and we can leave that situation and never go back again. But some of us have to go back. And that made me think about Paul, right, who was a persecutor of Jews. Yeah. But when he got saved, he had to preach the gospel, right? And he went to the people that he persecuted. That he so when we are changed, God may send us back to where we came from to do some work, right? And so when I went back that next time, I was walking less confident as far as arrogant like oh i'm great but i was walking in knowledge and awareness and wisdom and say that step's different i need to watch that right and that's not the first time i've lost grip on what i thought i had control of that's not the first time i thought i was totally on top of everything that is not the first time that i was down and had to get up and so i learned for the next time and all of that has to do with the faith that god um, that we have in God that he can keep us and carry us through whatever we have to go through so when he laughed I laughed too because I could look back and say that's not me anymore no I'm not still on the ground no I'm not still falling no I'm not still tripping over the, not that step <laughs> whatever it is it's gonna have to be something new I'm not gonna hit that step again and so the Lord really helped me with that because whoever comes out of the woodworks if somebody comes out of the woodworks right um, I can look at it and say, whatever they bring up, that's not me. And so that really helped me move forward. And I did go back and I did. I, I safely delivered everybody. Without going down. Without incident. Thank the Lord. <laughs> safely did it. We good. We good. I learned my lesson. And that is a very important point in all of this is that you learn and that you grow and you move forward. So it made me think of... I want to say something else too. Yeah, go ahead. Because um, we talked about being amongst the cloud of witnesses mm -hmm. and being able to share to help. So not only did you learn that lesson, now if you have to send somebody else over there to deliver yep. cards, you can say, hey, when you're going up those steps, <laughs> yeah, know, last one. that last one's just a little higher. You're going to want to be careful. Now, you share that with them and you help them to be successful and that same process without falling. Right. And that's the beauty of going through things and that's the beauty of being part of the body of Christ. Yes. How we're all supposed to help one another. So I'm telling you, hey, when you go to deliver these cards um, or hey, when you are going through this process or hey, when that person talks to you sideways or whatever it may be, exactly. you know, do this instead of doing that because when I did it this way, it didn't turn out good. No. <laughs> and it's on tape. <laughs> it can be relived. It can be relived over and over again. But uh, what you say is so true and you don't have to feel guilt. That guilt is what keeps you from witnessing. That embarrassment, that shame, that failure to get up. You know, when you've been down and in a tough spot, all of those things keep you from witnessing and it's a form of bondage. Mm -hmm. And that's what she said, that trick of the enemy wants you to not move forward. And what God was showing me through this experience, and I don't think God wanted me to bust my chin on this step, but again, he knew I wasn't going to hurt myself, right? And what he did is he showed me through that experience um, that I can move on and be free and I can help other people, right? Because if I had run away and packed up all my stuff, it doesn't seem like much because it's just cards, but those cards do things for people who are grieving, right? Mm -hmm. They mean something to someone who has lost the person that they love. And to continue on and say, you know, um, I can go ahead and still talk to these people and be around these people, we, we shouldn't hide when we face some sort of trial or um, negative experience right and so getting out of that bondage and the scripture that the Lord gave me was in Galatians 5 and 1 um, it says stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ 
hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And so I'm not a slave to sin anymore, right? But it says, be not entangled again. I was getting ready to go back to it, though. Not that I was getting ready to go back to doing what I used to do, but I was going to let the bondage of those things keep me from walking in the liberty where I had been made free. Mm -hmm. So do I believe it or do I not believe it? It's basically what God was asking me. Now, I made you free. Are you going to be free? And then he showed me that I was. So I just thought, you know, let me call Kanisha <laughs> and tell her what my idea is. <laughs> And here we are today. And so what I want to say to you women is um, we, we, we're we just beautiful, right? Women are beautiful. We, we are diverse. We have talent. We have skill. We have beautiful voices. We, we do. We're resilient. <laughs> we do a whole lot. We do a whole lot. We are adaptive. We're um, witty and cunning. But only God is perfect, right? We are a work in progress. So whatever it was that you had done in the past and whatever it is that you're going through right now, I want you to be encouraged to let God finish the work. Move forward. If he is calling you to do something, don't go back and say, well, I did that or I did this. He was there. He knows. <laughs> he knows. He knows what he brought you out of and what you have yet to be delivered from. But move forward in whatever it is that he's calling you to do and let him finish the work so that we can go on to perfection. Um, and continue to grow and be even more beautiful. And um, the last thing that he put in my mind was that as far as the east is to the west. And so if you are directionally challenged, <laughs> the east is one way, the west is the other way. You have a northeast and a southeast, but you don't have an east-west because they don't ever meet. And so when you're thinking about it, as far as those two points are, that's how far my transgressions have been removed from me. So that means we will never meet again if I don't, one of us has to turn around, right? That's the only way to come back. That's the only way to, for them to come back together. And, and I have committed in my heart not to be the one that turns. So as far as the east is to the west, whatever it is that I had and did, he has moved them that far apart. And we will never meet again if I continue on in him. And so that, I, it just, I like that, Sylvia. It, it just, it, it, it makes you feel good, yeah. doesn't it? It's like, well, wait a minute. Whatever's wrong with me, it's not wrong with me anymore. As long as you don't turn back, you don't have to meet again. Don't have to meet again. And so be encouraged. Whatever it is, if God is calling you to be a kitchen cleaner. Clean that kitchen. A news anchor. Do it. Do it. <laughs> whatever it is, do it. And don't allow who you used to be to hold you back. Thanks and join us for the next video. We look forward to talking to you again.